Hey, thanks for watching Read Write Exercise. Today I'll be going over the hacker rank problem of arrays left rotation. So uh, I'll be doing this, this with JavaScript. So it'll be pretty few lines of code. Basically what we want to do is take this array and rotate it left. So the two is gonna come over here to the one, the three will come over here to the two, and everything's gonna go down one index. And then the first index will just be, uh, I don't wanna say pushed or popped, although I was going to, will be moved over to the last index. Uh, so you can see a couple examples here and they give constraints. Uh, basically they say that they give the number of rotations the size of the array, which since I'm using JavaScript, I can just do this array.length, and then the second input is the array itself. Okay, so we will go ahead and want to return the new array, so I guess we will call this rotated array. And then what we will do is we'll return rotated array. Okay, so we're probably not gonna modify this in place uh, as I'm thinking about it, but we'll see as we get to it. But basically what's gonna happen here is that we're going to use two very JavaScript specific operations. First we'll do array dot shift and what this is going to do is this is going to pop off the item from the front of the array so pop would take off this back item but shift is going to pop off and return this front item and so we can do let front item equals array dot shift and so we'll actually probably just modify this array in place, which is fine. Or we can do this new array. Okay, so we'll make a copy by doing concat. So we now have our new array, and so we can now make this our modified array. And we can set this to const, whoops. We can set this to const because we're not gonna be overwriting the array itself. Now, we want to we want to loop in a sec here, but we'll just continue with this. So we'll shift it, shift that off, and then what we'll do is we will do rotated array dot push, and so we'll push that front item onto the back. And then once we push that, then it is going to have done one rotation. Okay, so now all we have to do is. iterate over this. And we basically want to repeat this for however many times we're told to, which would be this rotations number here. So we're going to do for i equals zero, and i is smaller than rotations, then we'll increment it every time and we really don't need to use i. I mean, we're just gonna repeat this process each time and then we'll be good and then we'll have the rotated array. So this is the, the beginning of how I would do this without having tested it. Let's just walk through it and make sure that it's okay. I'm making the array copy here and then I'm going to repeat something for however many times there are rotations Let's think about edge cases. If there were zero rotations, then it hopefully wouldn't do this at all, but we can test that down below. Then it's going to shift it off and we can, I believe we can do const here since it's in a for loop and it will reset that scope each time. We'll shift it off and then the front item we're just going to push onto the back and then this rotated array is gonna be modified in place. So then however many rotations happen, we'll go forward with that and then we'll return the rotated array. So let's go ahead and test this. We'll jump into this directory 
and we will run the left rotate here. Okay, so uh, the second one is our expected output and the first one is our actual output. So it is indeed giving us the correct output for this test case. Maybe we wanna try uh, changing this to zero. And in this case, the expected output would be actually what we're hearing for this sample array. So let's not log that second one and just make sure that we're gonna see the same amount of stuff here, the same array there. It looks like we do. So it works for zero rotations. We could test it for some gigantic number like a million or uh, we could come up with a couple other tests. I think we can assume that this is going to be an integer. We can assume that this is going to be an array of integers. So we don't have to handle uh, obscure edge cases where we're checking for types and stuff. But this is basic way of how to do this in JavaScript. Like I said, because of the JavaScript array functions that are provided, by the standard library, this is a pretty quick and uh, very limited lines of code. I don't want to say simple necessarily, but very few lines of code, and we can complete the challenge just like that. Let me know if you have other ways to do this, maybe a way that also would work in another language, like Java or C or Rust or something, or if you have any other thoughts about this. And uh, other than that, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.